also, of course, have the best broadcaster in the world in Sky Sports, backing us exclusively for the long-term future. And I'm going to pass over to the head of boxing, Adam Smith, before we introduce the fighters. Thanks, Eddie. It's an absolute pleasure to be back in Manchester, city of so many wonderful fights and nights. Seeing my old friend Anthony Bingham across the the room the other day. We, we go right back uh, on Sky in Manchester. We've got a long history, a long partnership. The Knights of Prince Nassim Hamad and uh, you know huge, huge fights over the years. Ricky Hatton, of course, synonymous with this city. Anthony Crawler in recent times. What a great story it's been. I think boxing just at the moment is, is flying. Every day we get something new announced. Yesterday we we're at Bramall Lane for the uh, huge fight between Kell Brook and Errol Spence and the first press conference for their showdown on May the 27th. A real, real genuine fight. And that's what the top of the bill is here on Saturday night. Jorge Linares, three-weight world champion, one of my favorite fighters over many years, absolute class. Anthony Crawler, we all know the story. He's been a, a wonderful advocate, hasn't he, for, for British boxing and world boxing over the last couple of years. And he's plotting revenge. I'm sure Jorge Linares will want more of the same come Saturday night. It was a wonderful fight last time. I think it will be even better on Saturday. There are two great guys. Terrific to see the respect as well between the pair of them outside of the ring. They're class. They really are. And, and sometimes you really need that in boxing. As Eddie said, an array of talent here. Great to see Jose Burton back, Marcus Morrison, Katie Taylor just in front of us. You know, brilliant, dazzling again the other week on the Hay Value night, and she's going right to the top. Lawrence Ocoli, we're gonna see him. It's gonna be fantastic. A real character, a really good story behind him. All the guys down there and up here on the top table, Bobby Rimmer and Brian Rose, good to see them. What, the Battle of Blackpool with Jack Armfield. You know, Martin J. Ward on. It's, um, it's going to be a great, great night, top to bottom. We start at 7 o'clock, laced with action all the way through, and uh, we cannot wait for the big one. Around about 10 15, 10 20, it will be Anthony Crawler trying for revenge against this man, Jorge Linares. Class boxing all the way at a time, I think, where this sport is as good as any, anywhere. Thank you, Adam. Of course, uh, the top of the bill is uh, Manchester's hero, Anthony Crawler, but he was built once and he came through the ranks through Manchester boxing. It's essential that we see the next generation coming through as well. Of course, some of those here today. I'm going to start with Ben Sheedy. Ben, um, second time on one of these big builds as well. Huge support that you're bringing. I'm sure you're excited to be part of the show on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely thrilled to be on another big build. Uh, exciting the word, really. But yeah, cheers for the opportunity. Obviously, you watch the likes of Crawler and obviously Hatton of the past. The support you have is, is incredible and all the opportunities to go on and try and follow in their footsteps. Yeah, definitely. I'm lucky enough to have a good fan base from where I live, so it helps. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can go up to be like Crawler, Ricky Hatton, following their footsteps. Tommy Taylor, huge support for you as well. It's not Liam Conroy, but it's a big fight for you and obviously on a big night with big support as well. Yeah, um, I'm gutted about the Conroy fight. Uh, I think his team made a stupid move taking the fight so close to ours and it's the biggest night of mine and his life but still great to be on a massive show and the support's amazing. There's three, 350 coming from my end so brilliant, really good. Obviously domestically the light heavyweight division is, is booming. Jose Burton just down the table from you, great fight with Frank Ruglione. You've got Callum Johnson as well, the Commonwealth champion, Nathan Cleverley the WBA world champion, a good division to be a part of and some big fights ahead. Yeah, it's, it's a really tasty division to be in and you know, I can't wait to get get going and get into the mix because that's what I was hoping with the Conroy fight and then start progressing and there was talk of that uh, Dex Spellman for the winner of me and Liam, so just get into it and get moving, get the high score and get the experience and then get to them top boys. Still in the light heavyweight division, Jose Burton. I think everyone in this room will agree, just one of the best fights we've ever seen live with you and Frank Buglioni. Obviously ahead in the fight, got stopped in the last round, but I'm sure you've learned a whole deal from that night. And I bet dying to get back into the ring on Saturday. Yeah, um, dying to get back in the ring. Um, it's one of those things that I, I never left on uh, the best of notes. Um, of getting beat, but it was such a good fight. And I think uh, people want to see me more now. Um, so. Yeah, I can't wait to get back in. And obviously, Buglioni, definitely a target moving forward. I think everybody here and the fans would love to see that later in the year. 
I would love that fight as soon as possible. I'd love to get it back on. Um, I feel as I'm still the best in Britain, even though he's got me belt. Um, but he's only keeping it for a little while until we meet again. So we hope we can get that fight on. If you can pass the mic down to Maxi. Maxi, Martin on his way. Um, the third fight between you two, quite incredible really. Um, I guess you know each other inside out. The British super, British super featherweight title on the line between you and Martin Ward on Saturday night. First fight, very close. I know you felt that you deserved to win that night. Second fight, he won by stoppage. And a big chance for you to become pretty British champion on Saturday. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm happy to be on this bill. Such a big bill, biggest bill that I'll have been on. Um, it's third fight award. It's two years on since our last fight, which ended up in my corner having to retire me. Uh, I was devastated, but it, that, it is what it is. That uh, that's in past now. Um, it was two years ago, I'm a new man. Um, I ain't got too much to say about the fight. Good luck to Martin, respect to him. Uh, I've had a great camp. Uh, I'm ready to win that belt. It's, it's been a dream of mine since turning pro, just to win that British. I can happily retire in the sun once I've, <laughs> once I've won that belt. Um, thanks to my trainers for getting me in good shape. Thank you to my sponsors. Um, that's all I've got to say. Obviously, having shared the ring with him twice, you, you know him pretty well. But you've had some big wins coming off the back of, of the defeat to Ward, and probably more confident than ever going into this fight. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a rematch I was really chasing. Um, all I bothered about was the British title. Um, I worked myself into mandatory position, uh, and it just so happens that it's Martin what holds that belt, so it'll just taste that bit sweeter, winning that belt and avenging a loss on my record. It's a great fight. It's going to kick off our transmission on seven o'clock. At seven o'clock on Sky Sports, British Super Featherweight title between Martin Ward and Maxi Hughes. Now, every time, every now and again, a young fighter coming through gets their acid test at this stage in their career, and that is Jason Wellborn against Manchester's Marcus Morrison for the WBC International Middleweight title. It is a great fight that we can't wait for. A huge test, a huge step up for Marcus Morrison. Jason, firstly, you look in great shape. Um, we've seen you on Sky before, you had a great fight with Matthew Macklin not too long ago and a huge opportunity for you on Saturday night. Yeah, it's a big opportunity for me and obviously I've uh, got to do it this time and uh, take that belt back with me and progress from this, keep on this level and uh, learn, learn from there. Look. But uh, I know what I'm in for, I'm expecting a good hard fight, whether it's going to be an hard fight or what, but I'm expecting a fit athlete fight in front of me, so I'm just looking forward and grateful to sign a show like, like this as well. So. I'm looking forward to it now. Your record is, is littered with British talent and you, know, you seem to be improving in, in a, yeah. the latter end of your career. Marcus hasn't been tested at all, so looking to use your experience in this fight of those bigger nights. Yeah, if, um, I've had to build myself up a couple of times before it's too hard with boxing, but I've got the people around me now, I've had sponsors and then I've had to work on the roads and do all this, but my sponsor and the gap has behind me down ways, paying me my wage and that, so I've got everything here now, so when I get in that ring, Everything's in my back of my mind. There's no looking back this time. Marcus, I think you've been waiting to be let off the leash for some time. And a big step up for you on Saturday night. I think everyone knows and you and your team and Joe, this is the first real test for you. Yeah, it's definitely the biggest test on paper for me. But I think it's one that I'll, I'll come through come through with flying colours and win comfortably. Um, you no know, respect to Jason, you know, he's had a good a good ten week camp, but he's had the same notice I've had. But you know, when it comes to Saturday night, there'll only be one winner. But like I said, respect to Jason. Um, he would have trained hard. I, I know, I know what Jason's coming with. He comes forward, and you know, it, it will bring the, the toughest test I've had up to date. But it's one I'm ready for. He's, he, yeah, we've looked at the best of Jason Worldwide. You know, there's been um, performance where Jason performed well, and some truthfully he's not performed so well. And you know, we've we've stood him at his best and. Um, you know, we're, we're hoping for the best of Jason and yeah, we're ready to do it on Saturday night. How excited are you to, to finally be in a fight where you know, there is doubt and there is pressure and there will be nerves and also someone that's really coming to win? For me, it's just going into another fight. You know, I've just got to use my, my, my talent and you know, what I've been working in the gym. And you know, if I do that, I feel I will win the, the fight comfortably, whether it, you know, it comes early or you know, I have to. I'll box um, Jason for the 10 rounds, either way I'll, I'll, uh, I'll come out with the win. Lawrence and Coley, we're bringing the sauce up from Hackney with the Penny Boys. 
Um, your professional debut, so excited. Obviously, you were due to fight Russell Hendry. We got stopped last Saturday, so we're announcing your opponent later. But everyone I seem to send through to you or Brian, you just don't even look at it and say, yeah, he's fine. If I can't be beating these guys, I need to reassess my goals, is what you texted me this morning. So uh, we're excited to see your debut. I know how excited you are, and it all starts for you on Saturday night. Yeah, thanks. Um, it's fantastic to be here, seeing so much media and friends and family here. Uh, I've been training hard for my debut now, so I'm in great shape. Um, my weight's low, and I'm just ready for everybody to put in front of me. Um, I'm excited to see how I'm going to deal with the pressure of boxing on Sky Sports and um, with, you know, everyone that I box now, I think is going to, um, especially in the cruiserweight division, is going to want to take what I've got because the cruiserweight division is a division that has a lot of good fighters, but they don't get a lot of publicity. So beating me is a chance for all of them to get publicity. So it starts here um, with winning and the most important thing is winning and then after that, um, everything will go where it's meant to go. Obviously, you boxed in Rio in the Olympics and huge pressure out there as well. Do you feel the pressure ahead of Saturday? Obviously, you'll be expected to win, but looking good as well, also important. Yeah, I mean, um, I was feeling the pressure earlier this week, but now that it's getting close to fight time and I've seen all the work that I've done, I look back at my strength and conditioning coach, my boxing coach, and see the amount of running I've been doing, the amount of rounds of sparring and stuff. I'm in great shape, so I feel the harder you work in training, the like, less nervous you get. So I feel. Not, not too nervous about fighting. Someone that's uh, walked that path recently, of course, Katie Taylor. I've warned everybody to be aware of cheap imitations in the women's boxing world. For me, there is only one talent at the moment in, in women's boxing, outside of Clarissa Shields, so I must say, that brings the entertainment, brings the style to excite, to invigorate, and to transcend women's boxing onto the main stage, and that's Katie Taylor. Katie, after that small build-up, no pressure on you on Saturday night. And uh, your first big test, up to eight rounds, Melina Kaliba, former world title challenger. I know you're excited to step up the levels. Yeah, thanks a lot. I mean, um, yeah, just a lie, and I'm very honoured again to be on such a big show. This is going to be definitely my toughest test. This girl is um, a great, great quality. She boxed for a world title in her last fight, so seven up to eight rounds against a good quality opponent. I'm very, very excited about it and uh, prepared for, for uh, whatever. Obviously, you boxed at Wembley Arena on your debut. You boxed on the Joshua Molina card in Manchester in front of a packed house. You boxed on the Hay Bellew card. You really feel now you're, you're understanding the professional game and, and confidence is growing, and so too is your performances. Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm improving. I'm getting stronger um, every time, and uh, it's just great to be on these big wheels again and to have an opportunity to, to box in such big, big crowds. And, um, Again, with what likes Anthony Grala and the Narrows both pro, just credit to the sport, and, and it's, I'm very, very honoured to be on their undercard. Thanks, Katie. One fight that I'm so proud both these guys from Blackpool, of course, is the Battle of Blackpool. Hundreds of fans coming down. I said in the launch press conference this fight, if you were a, a restaurant, a hotel, a pub, or any kind of shop, you might as well close on Saturday because everyone from Blackpool is going to be in Manchester <laughs> for this fight. Um, it's a great story. You know, friends and, and respect between them, but absolutely they must beat each other on Saturday night to advance their career. I'm going to start with the trainers. Bobby Rimmer, first of all, obviously a big history with everybody and a must win fight. Yeah. I know Brian looked great on, in his preparation for this fight, and you know how important yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody knows the problems that we've had over the last couple of years with Brian with his nose, with his elbow, and everything else, you know what I mean? But <clears throat> this camp can honestly tell everybody who's here that this has gone probably one of the best camps we've had for the last three years. You know, I, I couldn't bring Brian Rose in any better shape than he's going to be in on the night. You know, um, this is the best Brian Rose that sat at the side of me for the last three years. You know, the other camps, you know, the problems that he had with, with his nose, which started sparring with Kel Brook, and you know, every time we went into training, the nose went, so we had to keep changing things and before the Macklin fight, his elbow went and he needed an operation. And, and I wanted to, to pull Brian out before the Macklin fight, but he wouldn't, you know. He's a fighter and, and fighters want to fight. That's how he is and with his grit and determination, we got through the Macklin fight. And then he went away and he had his operation and um, his arm's fantastic. His nose is, he, I mean, it's, it's a big talking point in the gym, his nose, you know what I mean? It used to look really well, didn't it? Now it looks like someone's attacked him, doesn't it? But, uh, in modern days, remember when that big picture was outside, Eddie? You remember? But um, yeah, so 
so you know everything we've done in camp and he's had he's had he sparred 76 rounds that's what he's done for this fight um you know so I, I can do no more we've done everything you know um, there's no excuses there's going to be no excuses on the night and you know you, you're going to see a great performance from Brian because because this, this this fight has given him a kick up the ass and me a kick up the ass you know as fighters and trainers when you get to a big stage and then you're not on the big stage you really do miss it that's the truth and for me here to be back in Manchester on such a fantastic show you know, I was spoiled in the beginning because, you know, I, I was in Ricky Hatton's corner for all his fights at the MEM. So I, I, as a trainer, I was spoiled. But, but this now, this is, these shows, what you're putting on, the, these, are the, these shows are just exactly the same. Obviously, the fighters know each other so well and they know their, their games inside out. How's it been for a trainer? Because Brian will, will know Jack so well, you will as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean Jack, Jack Arnfield do not mean anything to me, you know. You, you look after kids and you, you give them the best and sometimes it's not good enough and they leave you. It's happened to most of the trainers, you know what I mean? So, And yeah, he does smart in the beginning, but he's just an opponent to me. And that's it. You know, I couldn't care less about Jack Arnfield. He's just an opponent. You know, I don't dwell on, you know, what, what we did and what we didn't know. And, you know, of course I know about him. You know, he lived, he lived amongst my family for five years. You know what I mean? So I do know a lot about him. But, you know, he'll tell you he's changed and he's done this and, and the other. So, you know, we'll see on the night, won't we? You know. Obviously, some, some big nights, winning the Lonsdale belt outright, challenging uh, Andrade for the world title in New York, the Matthew Macklin fight, the Carson Jones defeat, and then avenging that loss as well. But must win. Yeah, that well, of course it's a must win fight. I mean, Brian's at the stage of his career now where we're looking to get into the, into the big time again. If he can't beat Jack Arnfield, there's no getting into the big time again. That's it. You know, uh, Brian's put Blackpool back on the map in boxing. There was nothing before Brian. And, you know, and th that's, you know, people going about the money for this fight and this, that, and the other. It's not about that. Jack Hanfield took this fight because he's jealous of Brian Rose. Always has been, always will be. But he'll never be able to get what Brian Rose has done and what he's achieved. You know, so Jack Hanfield's fight with Brian Rose is fueled by jealousy, not by money, not by anything else. Plain and simple. Mick or Pat, <laughs> um, you've had a great run with, with uh, Jack Armfield recently, some great wins, of course the, the John Ryder win was a great win and Mick Hall as well and a big big fight, big opportunity as well and I know you're confident going into this fight. Yeah of course, I mean Jack's a credit to himself and to boxing, when he first came to us he, he, he wouldn't have been sat on this stage now, he would have kept on the way he was going in the same gym as what he was before and there's no chance on this planet he would have been up here now, no chance. Everything we've done in this camp, he's been good. He's been improving from the first fight that he had with us. He's improved with each and every one of them. So, you know, Saturday night, we've left no stones unturned. We always sell that, but camp's gone well. He's had no injuries, like, you know, his previous trainers were saying. He was getting injured every other week, but maybe that was put, put down. I would put that down to the training that he was doing at that other camp. Um, we've obviously worked around it. We've substituted for different things. And, He's had no, no injuries or anything, he didn't sat in the night. You know, he's going to be 100%. How do you see the fight playing out? Obviously, Jack knows Brian very well. How do you see tactically it unfolding? There's, there's two ways. Brian's either going to come to fight or he's going to be on his back foot to box. We've got an answer for each, each way, anyway. We've, we've studied Brian, the best of Brian, and we've studied the bad fights as well. So, none of them are known as big punchers. Um, but we also know that Brian does cut on his nose. We're not looking into that, but if that does happen, you know, he, that, that's going to play a part. I know they say it don't, but it is going to. I've been there myself. I just think Jack's going to be too sharp, too hungry, and I think he'll beat Brian on points. Brian Rose, um, I know you're hungry going into this fight, and you know you've been around, you know how important this is, and a must win fight for you on Saturday. Yeah, there's no doubt that my, my career's on the line, you know. Um, uh, it, it, it's, my, it's it's over if, it, if, it, if I get beat by Jack Arnfield, you know, it's, it, my career is definitely on the line and I have been taking it fight by fight and every fight it's like my career is on the line. I said against Macklin, if I lost to Macklin, it would be game over, but there's circumstances behind that. Um, so this one, it's a must win fight because it's a private stake as well, so I don't want to be walking around Blackpool uh, being number one and then going to number two, you know, so 
Um, there's a lot of pride at stake as well. Like I say, it's, it's not just about the money, it's about um, pride. Obviously, you know Jeff inside out. Where does the confidence come from to beat him? Just that you're always that step ahead of him, obviously coming off some impressive performances and he has got the momentum going into this fight. Yeah, I mean, a year, two years ago, he wouldn't even look to fight me. We spoke about it in the gym and he, you know, he, he, he knew all his levels above him. So after a year, how can he be above me? You know, a lot changed in a year, but not that much. So for me, um, I, I've been at the top, I've been in with much better operators. Um, I can do the 12 rounds better. Jack's got a really good engine and, and, and I'll match his engine, but I do believe I can do the 12 rounds much better. Um, <laughs> you know, everyone knows that I like to win on points, so uh, I can do the 12, 12 rounds standing on my head. Um, but I'm going to bring something more to this fight. It's not just going to be the, you know, Bry's got a good jab. There's, there's, there's going to be fireworks on Saturday, I can promise you that. Jack Arnfield, the, the reigning WBA champion, international champion going into this fight. Blackpool's number two or already Blackpool's number one? Well, that was part number two. I think I'm higher than Brian in world rating, so I'd say that puts me on number one at the moment. Minute, wait, one five, what are you talking about? Minute, well, we're still so, so high in the rating, so that's one thing there straight away. I mean, I'm ready for the fight. I can't wait for it. As far as jealousy goes, it doesn't do with jealousy. I want to progress in my career. Uh, the fight was offered. Brian's back number 12 by the WBO. He's well known around the world. He's, he's been there and done that. It's, it's, a, it's a progressive step for me. About pride of Blackpool doesn't bother me. I'm not bothered about the pride of Blackpool. It's about progressing in my career. Do you think that this is the right time for you to fight Brian Rose? Obviously, you've got great momentum at the moment. You talked about a year ago. It might not have been really on the cards, but you know, although you two know each other, you, you were quite quick to take this fight. Well, you, you, I, have, I, mean, I think I've improved massively over the past year, 18 months. Um, you can see on my, my, my last few performances, I've worked through there's different bits in my game. I'm not a complete different fighter, but there's more in my arsenal than I was 18 months ago. Um, and 18 months ago, yeah, Brian was probably steps ahead of me. He was, he's always been one step ahead of me, but the, 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 he was one step ahead. Now I'm, I, I've got the front foot, I've got the momentum going forward. Everything's in my favour for this fight for me to win. Many people and, and some of the camps talking about 12 round fight. Do you see that or do you think this fight can catch fire and not last the distance? Well, if it goes anything like it used to when we used to spar and stuff, then it's, it, it'll be a bit of both. I think there'll be parts of it, it's a bit like a chess match from the parts of it, where we uh, get right involved and, and, and have a good tear up. But um, as far as points go, we've been sparring 16 outside guards on, we've got 10 out of on in there, and, 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 and there's a lot on the stakes, a lot on the line, so it could go out, 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 either way, stoppage or, or, or points win for me. Great stuff, can't wait for that one. It's going to be a great fight, great atmosphere, and our chief support. Now, a main event that I think has got everybody waiting and talking about. The first encounter last year was just a great, great fight. Um, of course, not just live on Sky Sports, but live on Showtime in America, and I think that goes to show picking up UK content shows the quality of this fight. Jorge Linares, one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in world boxing against Anthony Crawler, trying to win his belt back. The story, everybody knows, it's an incredible one and an absolute newfound, even further desire to regain that belt with himself and Joe Gallagher who worked tirelessly in this camp and there's a real feeling of energy and confidence going in. I'm going to start with the champion and of course uh, his promoter is someone that we've dealt with for a, a long period of time and it's unusual in boxing to really have never fallen out with another promoter having done this many fights but I can honestly say I don't think we've ever had an argument Robert, um, especially over a couple of bottles of red wine, but it's a pleasure to have you back here and um, I know how passionate you feel about Jorge Linares, how passionate you feel about Anthony Crawler, Manchester, England, and how passionate you are about great fights. And that's one of the reasons you're back here today. Absolutely, Eddie. Um, thank you. Thank you for having us again. We're very excited, Manchester, to be back. I said it once, said it, I'll say it again. You guys have uh, the best fans, support your fighters. We respect Anthony and the team tremendously. And we know, we know what he's gonna bring. He's hungry, he wants to get it back. He's on his home turf. He has that, that, that pressure once again to, to win one for, for, for the UK. And we know he trained twice as hard. I, I understand Joe took him away to the mountains somewhere around here and it secluded him. I see a very young, happy, smiling Anthony like, like I did before, so. <laughs> 
Um, but Jorge trained three times so far because he knows the responsibility. He knows what he has to do to even win clear this time. Now, if you all remember in the last press conference prior to the first fight, I said you will see the best Jorge Linares you have ever seen. I think a lot agreed, a lot of the media agreed that, wow, this Jorge Linares was much better than we've seen in the past. Well, I'm gonna take it a little step further. On Saturday night, you will see a better Jorge Linares than you, see, than you did in September. And I wanna give a big round of applause to the man who is behind that, and that's Mr. Ismael Salas. Thank you, coach. Jorge, uh, welcome back. Um, we know you've beca become accustomed to the UK now and the UK fans. We know you love fighting here. And I'm sure you're very excited about the fight and the rematch with Anthony Crowder on Saturday. Bueno, primero que nada, eh, gracias. Gracias, Eddie. Gracias a toda la gente de acá de Inglaterra, a Manchester, a todos los fanáticos. Sé que eh, nuevamente vengo a casa de rival. Eh, siento que vengo como retador, a pesar de ser eh, el campeón eh, esta vez. Pero agradecido por esas oportunidades que me han dado. Me siento bastante contento gracias a, la, a mi promotora de Golden Boy Promotion, a Taking Promotion. Es una oportunidad más, sé que es, es una revancha bastante dura, pero venimos con todo bien preparado para ganar. Well, first of all, thank you, Eddie. Thank you very much. And thank you to all the people of Manchester, of England. Um, I'm back. I'm back. And I am happy to be here. I know uh, once again, um, I have everything, you know, all the fans, everybody against me. I'm in the backyard of my opponent. But look, that's why I train hard and that's why I'm prepared. And, and we respect Anthony tremendously. But I'm going to do everything in my power to take this. I'm not looking at this as I'm coming with the belts. I know I'm the champion, but I'm not coming in here uh, feeling like the champion. I'm coming in here feeling like the challenger because I know I have to perform, I have to win, and I have to be very clear to go back home with my belts. Tuvimos una preparación bastante bien. Me fui a Japón los primeros de los últimos de diciembre. Arranqué mi preparación física desde desde el 10 de enero. Eh, me regresé el 20 a Las Vegas, tuve 8 semanas justamente, hice 130 rounds de sparring y la verdad que fue una preparación excelente, fue una de las mejores preparaciones físicas que he hecho, así que es cuestión nada más de esperar el día sábado para poder demostrarle al mundo entero y a toda la gente de Manchester que, que sigo siendo el campeón. I had a tremendous camp, I started off my camp uh, at the end of December in Japan, conditioning and strength. From there I had 8 great weeks, I could say one of the best camps ever in Vegas. Great training, no injuries, and I'm, I'm anxious. I just can't wait to show on Saturday night and put it all together and, and like I said, return home with my belts. Thank you very much, Robert. Thank you, Jorge. Jorge, you're a class act. We wish you the best of luck on Saturday night. Joe Gallagher, I know uh, you don't like losing, and I think this camp, you and Anthony have really showed how much that loss hurt. You've uh, taken him away, you've limited his activity. He's had a great camp. You've been texting me after spas saying how well he's going and how confident you are in this fight and uh, it was always a big night for you in Manchester with Jose and Marcus on and a great opportunity for Anthony to win those belts back. Yeah, um, thanks everyone for coming out again. Thanks for everyone that's left Anthony Crawler alone that like I asked for last time. I feel I've got, I know Robert Diaz is a great talker and he's as good as you Eddie, isn't he? He's a great talker. Well, not, not, well, not at all. <laughs> okay, but he's <laughs> Listen, we, we know we've got to get the best Jorge Linares. I knew last time, some people accused us most probably not of overlooking him last time. We never, we, we know what we're dealing with. He's got a world-class coach and it's Ismael Salas. Um, I'm surprised this mayor isn't up here today to speak. I'm sure with a coach with his credibility and what he's achieving isn't often he comes to this country. And last time in Manchester, I didn't speak one word to him. Yet last weekend, we met up in Barcelona and we were sat there talking for half an hour. Um, and I think at some stage after I've spoke, if Ismail can come up and speak a few words, I think it'd be really good to hear the UK hear what he has to say about the fight himself. But as far as Anthony, yeah, um, took him away. He's in great shape. And I think more so mentally, more though, as well as physically. Everyone knows Anthony's um, physically strong, physically fit. Um, but we were in with, and I think it's lost on a lot of people, what an exceptional fighter Jorge Linares is. He's a four-time world champion. Just let that sink in, four times at three different weights. If you would have said two years ago Anthony Crawler was fighting a four-time world champion at three different weights, I'd be left out of this room. But he isn't, he was in there last time, and he's back again. 
Last time the preparations weren't that good. The week before, Robert knows I was in Dallas with Liam Smith and Canelo, so Anthony was left alone. The weekend before that was in London with the Smiths for the Triple G Brook fight. So the, 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 the last key couple of weeks, I wasn't around Anthony. Uh, this time, there's been nobody out from the gym this year, bar Liam last week in a secret mission. Um, and all focus has been on Anthony Crawler. Everyone in the gym knows it's been Anthony Crawler, and he's done what I've asked of him. Everyone around him, his friends, his family, the supporters, have done what I've asked of him, and I feel he's got to go in there Saturday night. This is the seventh time, I think it is, Anthony's headlined at that Manchester arena. Seven times. That hasn't happened since the days of Ricky Hatton, a Manchester kid doing that. We need, we want to get to 10, we need more nights like this. You see the undercard, the Manchester kids coming through, the Olympians coming through. It's a great event and that's what this is going to be on the night as well as a great fight. Uh, I respect Hogan and Ira's team.